Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a sweet simple landscape featuring the Eiffel Tower. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay so to begin with I just need to get some colours woken up in my palette. So we're going to create a bit of a sky. It's quite grainy my French ultramarine blue. So just got to be careful not to get too stuck in the graininess. I've got some cadmium orange there and actually I'm going to just get a tiny bit of permanent rose in there too. Okay, what I'm going to do is use my flat head one stroke brush and I'm going to create a little piece that just sort of sits in the page here with a nice sort of rough edge. So I started with a very dilute mix of my orange and pink and I'm now going to build up the blue. I love this brush because I think it creates really fantastic uh, edges to a piece. I love pieces that you can see the watercolour edge on the page. I just think there's something very cool about it. Okay, so that brush is going now. We don't need it anymore. That is available in my shop if you want to get your hands on one of those. Uh, right, so we basically need to let this dry. Uh, it needs to dry to a point where it is sort of a t the tiniest bit damp. Um, so the paint isn't going to travel too far. So I'm going to leave it about sort of two, three minutes and we'll come back to it. That has um, dried, it's nearly there. It's not 100%, which is what I want because I've just mixed up a little bit of uh, green gold with some Payne's Gray. And if I take some quite dilute amount, what I want to do is just start to build the basis of the sort of framing trees and bushes. Well, I guess it is probably pretty much entirely dried. Never mind, it was a nice idea. Um, I sort of thought it might be cool to sort of build up, build up the colour, but it's all good because I'm painting it in a very dilute manner anyway, so. Sometimes you just miss, miss the boat with uh, your watercolour paper drying times, but as I said, there's no real problem here. I was just quite interested in getting it even, even more sort of softer and blended, but it's all fine. Oh, actually, no, we're getting it. There we go. I was right after all. <laughs> Ant will be wondering what I'm wittering on about whilst he edits this. Um, Okay, so yeah, we've got a, a, just a tiny bit of softness in the, the paper. And so we're getting the tiniest bit of a bleed and a blend, which is lovely. So I've just sort of built up this with a size uh, four brush, just building it up a little frame because I'm gonna put my Eiffel Tower just in there. And uh, yeah, I'm quite excited about this. Um, I just thought it might be quite a nice alternative idea to try a little bit of um, sort of loose watercolour landscape painting. So I just added a bit of burnt sienna into my blue tones here and it's given me a lovely sort of um, shadowy grey. Um, I'm going to just wake up my yellow ochre because the Eiffel Tower is actually quite a sort of bronzy kind of colour. So we want to get a bit of that a bit of red in there as well. There we go. So we've got a, like a quite a cold brown. To be honest, that would be probably a pretty good uh, raw umber or raw sienna. Anyway, yeah, there you go. So you might have a brown that already sort of resembles that. And what I'm going to do is I just want to have a go at just like just trying painting it in quite sort of loosely. So I'm going to use my size zero brush, angle quite low to the page and like I said I want to do this 
in a slightly sort of stylized manner. You can draw it first if you want to, but all I'm doing is, is I've got a few reference photos off camera to one side and I'm just I'm just looking at them basically. But the key thing is is I'm painting this with a very dilute colour. I am just sort of putting in the bare bones, keeping my brush strokes nice and fluid and keeping an eye on the, the perspective because this is a, a, a view of sort of looking up at the tower. So I'm rather pleased with that as a starting point. Um, I am going to um, sort of let this all dry. I want it to dry fully now, and then I'm gonna come back in and add some detail over the top. Okay, so we've let things dry just a little bit more, and I'm going to get a bit more color, and I'm gonna get a bit of Alizar and Crimson in there. Yeah, I want that, that lovely deep dark coppery feel. And I'm going to use my four tenths brush because I want to be really like careful and gentle with this. Yeah, there we go. So we've still got a little bit of wetness, which is perfect. What I want to do is just try and get a little bit of that wonderful detail on the Eiffel Tower. Not too much, but you can see just by being a little bit patient. We can get some wonderful little details. And I'm just finding little areas that weren't painted uh, in the first stage of painting this Eiffel Tower, which means they're going to be much crisper and will allow for a bit more, yeah, crisp detail. I really like that. I'm really pleased with it. I've never painted the Eiffel Tower before. And um, I just thought when you're faced with something quite intimidating like that, just don't try and capture every single thing. I just think capturing the essence of it is what I've always been about with, whether it's flowers, landscapes. I'm not, I'm not all for photorealistic detail. I like, <laughs> I like capturing the feel of a piece. Okay, so that's looking really nice. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bit more of this uh, greenery in the front. So I'm adding more sap green, more Payne's gray. And I am going to, with a smaller brush, start dabbing the brush around on this sort of area of green that I created earlier on um, and the the aim is is that we're going to keep a lot of that paler color visible underneath but then we can just use the brush to sort of just get a little bit more feel a bit more of a defined leaf and then I'll be coming in afterwards 
with branches that will find the gaps in the greenery. which will help us really create this lovely lovely scene of a view from a Parisian park of the Eiffel Tower. Here I have my rigger brush, which I'm going to use to create a few branches poking in and around using the shadow mix of the dark combination of burnt sienna and Payne's grey. And um, this is still wet which is what I want because I want to get a little bit of a sort of bleed and blend which works all right when the rigger brush is just so nice and slender so and what I find is so I'm just painting in the gaps but I'll also add in a, a few extra ones and look I'm literally scribbling the brush at the bottom there um, obviously you've got to sort of decide where your branches are coming from whether this is like a bush or a uh, bit more of a tree And what we'll be doing is once I've painted in all these branches, I will be adding just a few extra little leaves to some of these protruding branches that we've got. I'm also choosing to have the branches sort of come in and frame the piece rather than just sort of go upwards with no real sort of uh, interaction with the Eiffel Tower. So that's an interesting thing about composition, isn't it? Of sort of where you choose, how you allow your items on the page to interact with each other. You want to be thinking about where you want the, the viewer to end up with their gaze. So we want people to notice the Eiffel Tower. So I'm sending people in that direction with the branches. Also, I think this is one of my favourite watercolour exercises is when you've painted in a load of blobby foliage and it can sometimes look a bit rubbish and then suddenly you get your rigger brush out and just add in all these wonderful little branches and it just looks so cool. And again, just like scribbling with the brush. doesn't need to be everywhere you don't need to be putting it in to everything but it just it looks good when you've got quite a bit going on there and I'm going to take this just more solid sap green here and I'm going to use it sort of partly for some leaves and then I'm going to use it also for a few it's low lights on the main bulk of the tree and you can see it's still wet so we're still getting a bit of a bleed which is quite cool and this also allows you to integrate the Eiffel Tower building into your painting just that little bit more And there you have a pretty little Parisian painting. Either, oh, perfect if you've um, been over to Paris and had a, a lovely moment that you want to remember, or just a really nice opportunity to paint a world famous landmark in a rather sort of simple and, and not too intimidating fashion if you're new to painting scenes and landscapes. 
there we go. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed that one, hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.